first question is, how much does pickerel go for a pound these days? <laughs> the prices are going up, <laughs> as like everything else. <laughs> yeah, congratulations again. Um, <clears throat> Um, that was fairly um, a clinical uh, a game. Did you expect it to be, I mean, Alberta's a pretty good team. Did you expect it to be that easy? No, we definitely didn't. Um, Alberta's a really great team and they make a ton of shots and, uh, you know, that uh, it, it was tricky out there. Um, you're 4-0. Um, you're like this close to a playoff spot. Is that going to ease um, tensions or anything um, being this close? Um, no, I think we're just going to keep doing what we've been doing. We've been learning every game and uh, starting to have really good starts in games too. So we're just going to keep bringing that to every game we have left and every game's hard. So we can't take our pedal off the gas. What? Put okay. Off. I'm <laughs> what? I was like, that's not a saying. <laughs> I was looking at yeah. I was looking for a key end. Uh, I kind of thought it was the second end when um, Val made two great shots and you got a couple of ticks from them. Uh, would you agree that that third end was the big end? Yeah, that was Could you put a, you up? a big one. Um, when we uh, stole the three, but Val played unreal and uh, everyone did and uh, made some big clutch shots when we needed them. You mentioned keeping the pedal to the gas. When you're up 7-1 after four ends, is it tough to keep focus at that point? What do you do to make sure that you get to that finish line and, and don't let that lead slip away? Um, you know the other team is gunning for you, and they're going to try and use anything they can to get back, and they're a great team. So we had to be precise and make our shots just like we had for the first half of the game. And I think we did a good job at that. But, yeah, even when you're up, you still got to – keep in it because people can come back for sure we've carried your they learned that oh. yes <laughs> we've seen it we're never safe <laughs> Gary, for, for you do you uh do you prefer playing one game in a day like today or do you prefer playing twice in the morning and night i'll play whatever i have to play yeah. just love being out there it doesn't matter what fair enough and one more from me what do you think of the the new adjusted playoff format this year I don't know. We haven't we'll played see. it yet. Yeah. <laughs> it's, we'll definitely, you know. it's definitely different. Um, it's a different format, uh, but uh, yeah, there's it's always changing. Yeah, <laughs> two and one that uh, really puts you in the mix. <clears throat> yeah, it does. <laughs> uh, we're really happy um, that we we're two. We're sitting at two and one. Um, we. We are getting stronger every game. Our first game, we felt we controlled the first half and uh, fell apart the second half. Um, we would have liked that one back, but we're happy that we bounced back and have won our last two. And um, everyone's throwing really well, so we're just building. It's been a while since we've had some games together, so um, we're hoping we'll just build every game and get better as the week goes on. Uh, one final question here for Sarah. Sarah, what's it like to compete against your former teammate in uh, Patty Wallingham? Uh, it's hard. Um, I, I love Patty. Like Patty and I are still best friends and we always will be. And we have a special bond. We played together for a really long time. And so um, when you're out there, you just have to put those blinders on and, you know, you're just playing another team and you have to take the emotion out of it. Um, but at least the bonus is I get to see her. So I can't complain too much about that. How happy are you to get that first win now? Thank you. Uh, very. Um, we just played so much more consistently today, like the team that I know and love us to be. So, uh, yeah, it's nice to be back on track. What can you put anything? What was happened the first game? Though it just, I don't want to say jitters. You've been here before, but were the team just figuring things out? Do you think? Yeah, there was a combination of trying to figure things out, but really we didn't play poorly and you know we lost on last rock in the last end in our first two games so it wasn't like we got blown out or anything you know we just um somebody's got to win and somebody's got to lose so unfortunately we were on the losing side but um yeah it just sort of all felt a lot better and cleaner today 
does this obviously give you more comp not more confidence but set the stage moving forward do you think yeah i think so i mean we know that we can compete with anybody um we just hadn't proved it yet so i think uh we're back to us question for both of you um that was an extremely controlled game as far as uh, execution goes and strategy goes. Um, is there a set layout or a plan that you'd like to take into a game? Absolutely. There's, uh, we know the strategy that we like to play that brings out our best game. Not that we can't play all styles of game, but um, we went in with some strong intentions to get hammer in the first end and we knew how we wanted to dictate play with that. And we just were able, you know, to get a few extra points on the board and then be able to execute and, and call that strategy that we're really comfortable with. It seemed to work because you opened the first end with a three and that's a great way to start a game. What are your emotions after you take that first three? <laughs> well, it's a 10 end game. <laughs> I don't know if you've been watching this week, but there's there's wild scores. You can be down four or up four kind of early in the game. And with the five rock rule and kind of the, the caliber of players that are here, the quality of ice that you're playing on freezes, taps, you know, a real aggressive style of game to get a two or three is, is very manageable in a game. But we were probably most happy because we um, executed the way we wanted to. So, you know, those, not that we had jitters, but just kind of that consistent slide, the consistent feel, the, the deliveries were all there right from the first stand on. So I think that's what we were even more happy with. That uh, looked like you had that game under control. Uh, then what happened? Yeah, uh, we definitely came out of the gates pretty strong there. Uh, we gained a lot of momentum the past couple of days, and we've kind of been carrying that forward. Um, I mean, Team Duncan, they're a force to be reckoned with as well. They played great that second half of that game. They definitely gave us a run for our money. I think um, we had a couple of, like, okay, what happened there moments, and I think that caught us a bit off guard, but we were able to grind it out in the end and pull off the win. How important is it maybe early on to have – something like this face some adversity and come back do you think this is good for the rest of the tournament i really do i think it's so vital to be put in these situations early because we learned specifically from provincials we went to extra ends or or being tied last drop coming home the majority of games and so we developed you know a strategy plan and so when we were put in that situation in the final uh we knew exactly what we were playing and we had a lot of confidence going into it so i think getting those opportunities early even though, you know, it is a little bit stressful early on, it gives you a really good opportunity going further in the event to do well. Hi, uh, congrats on the win. Mackenzie, you're 3-0 to start the Scotties. Obviously, it's still pretty early on, but I'm just curious, what do you think is going right for the team this week so far? Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot's been going our way so far. We've had a couple of really close wins that could have gone either way, and fortunately, we've been able to pull those off. Um, I think we just came really prepared this year. We've had, we have more women's games under our belt. We have more experience. And I think with our team, the more experience to get, the more experience that we get, the better we're going to get. So I think um, that's really helped us out this year. We're all a year older too. And we just came here, we came here to play this year. We came here to win. Just in terms of, you know, that experience and preparation, I'm wondering how much does the fact that you played last year and already have a Scotties under your belt, how much does that help you coming into this year now that you're Team Manitoba? Yeah, I mean, that made a world of difference. Um, last year at the Scotties, I mean, that was our first Scotties ever. That's the Scotties. We were there for the very first time, and it was such an eye-opening experience. Uh, we had so much fun. I mean, we definitely didn't do as well as we would like would have liked. Um, and that could have been due to the lack of preparation and practice because due to COVID. But um, I think this year with only having three wins last year. Um, we came into this year wanting to do a lot better and that was our goal. And we're gonna see how far we can take that. Um, Mackenzie, what's what's the difference in bubble life from Calgary to Thunder Bay? Mm -hmm. um, not too much actually. I think Curling Canada did a pretty good job of keeping a lot of things consistent. Um, last year we were pretty locked down, hotel to the arena, hotel to the arena. And this year it's the same just to keep everybody nice and close and to keep COVID away. Um, and everything has been going really well so far. Um, I believe all the tests have been coming back negative. So that's really good to hear. There hasn't been a whole lot of difference. We can't go to eat out. We can't go through drive-throughs. We have to minimize contacts. 
um, ordering in. Fortunately, there's volunteers in Thunder Bay that are running to get groceries for us, which is really awesome. So um, honestly, not that much different, but that's okay too. What about, I guess, mentally, just from the aspect of being in a bubble for the second time? Yeah, I mean, we've never experienced the Scotties in any other way, which is kind of sad, but I mean, hopefully in the future, we get to be in a Scotties where they're going to do all the celebrations and there's fans. Um, but I think last year, nobody knew what to expect going into the bubble. So having that being our only experience coming now into Thunder Bay, we kind of knew what to expect. We knew how things are generally going to go. So um, mentally, we didn't prepare that much differently because we knew exactly what to expect. So maybe a little easier then yeah exactly yeah. it was definitely easier knowing that okay this is what's going to happen there's not going to be any fans so when you make a nice shot you kind of got to hype yourself up <laughs> a little bit but i mean yeah it was definitely a little bit easier than it was last year not knowing anything at all emily you curled last year in the bubble all the things your sister just mentioned how different does it feel though instead of a wild card sweater you're wearing a manitoba jacket this year you know, like we were so thrilled to get to just play in the Scotties as a wildcard team last year, but having the Buffalo on your back is such an incredible feeling. And so getting to step out onto the ice, wearing the Buffalo, it's, it's honestly, it's un indescribable. Like we have just taken in the experience because we know that it might not come very often with uh, how, how strong our field is in Manitoba. So getting this opportunity to wear the Buffalo and, you know, wear it with pride is something that we're really proud to do. Mackenzie? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that blue was pretty nice last year. I'm not gonna lie, getting to be <laughs> just part of the Scotties. I think opening it up to 18 teams allows us younger teams to have a chance to get in, especially coming from a tough province, which I think is super great for the development of the sport. Um, but yeah, this yellow jacket, I don't want to take it off. That's for sure. 